Hello, welcome to Learn and Play with Gilcrease Museum. My name is Angie. I'm so glad you're here today. Today we're going to talk about water. We're going to look at the painting from Thomas Moran called Shoshone Falls on the Snake River. Finally, we are going to look at a really fun activity where you can make your own waterfall with paint. Let's get started. Now let's take a look at Shoshone Falls on the Snake River by Thomas Moran. Thomas Moran was an artist and an explorer. He loved the landscapes of the American West. He wanted to paint them so that he could show all of the beautiful landscapes to the people who couldn't see it for themselves. Thomas Moran hoped that his paintings would inspire the American government to protect the landscapes in the American West. He was very important in creating the first national park, Yellowstone. This painting, Shoshone Falls and the Snake River, shows a waterfall located in southern Idaho. The falls were so majestic when Moran saw it. He hoped that his painting would make the case for the area to be included in the new national park. National parks are federally protected areas of land that will not be damaged or destroyed by humans. Unfortunately, Shoshone Falls couldn't be protected in time. People created a dam on the river to move the water to agriculture and eventually an electric power plant. This dam blocks most of the water from getting through and the falls looks much smaller today. Let's look closely at Moran's Shoshone Falls on the Snake River painting. What do you see in this painting? I see a waterfall, rocks, a tree, some mountains, some clouds. What else can you find? Those are some great ideas. Can you find a bird? There it is. What do you wonder about this painting? One thing I wonder is what it would be like to be there. Can you imagine? Let's pretend. Let's activate our senses and jump inside the painting. Great. What do you think it smells like here? I think it smells like it just rained. I smell fresh, humid air. Humid means that there's a lot of water vapor in the air. I also smell fresh plants and dirt. What does it feel like? I feel a cool breeze on my skin. I also feel calm and peaceful. What can you hear? I hear leaves rustling from the breeze. I also hear birds singing. Can you hear the water? I hear the water rushing down the river and splashing at the bottom of the waterfall. What else can you hear? Yeah, that's great, I hear that too. That was such a great experience. I can see why Thomas Moran wanted to protect it. Another reason we should protect our water is because we don't have very much of it that's usable on Earth and is very important to our lives. What are some different uses of water that you can think of? We wash our hands with water. We take baths in water. We brush our teeth with water. Plants need water to grow. We even use water to make plastic and sometimes to make electricity. This is why it's very important to conserve our water, to protect it, because we only have a small amount on earth that we can use for all of these things. Conservation is taking care to limit our use, to make sure that our resource, such as water, is around with us for a long time. The water we use from our rivers and lakes is a finite resource. That means it will never renew. It's the same water that's always been around. That's why it's important to protect it. Our water starts as a liquid on Earth, evaporates into a vapor in the air that we can't see. Then it condensates or sticks together in the sky to form clouds. Once it gets heavy, it falls to the earth again as rain, snow, or ice precipitation. That's water molecules that are falling from the sky. This 
This is called the water cycle. Some of the water is absorbed into the ground, but most of it evaporates and starts the cycle all over again. National parks help by creating safe spaces for water, nature, and animals to exist. There are things you can do at home to save water as well. You can turn off the water faucet when you're brushing your teeth. You can plant plants in your yard that don't take very much water to grow. You can also collect rainwater in barrels outside and use that to water your plants. Also, you can reduce plastic use in your daily life. Now we're going to create our own waterfall using drip painting. For this activity, you will need construction paper, tempera or washable paint. I chose blue, light blue, and white. You'll need pipettes or a turkey baster. You can find that at home. You'll need a shallow pan, plastic cups, tape, and additional coloring supplies. The first step in this is to pour your tempera or washable paint into the containers using a thin amount of water to thin your paint out a little bit. You're going to tape your construction paper to a stand or a wall. I taped mine to this cardboard box. The end of it should be sitting in the saddle pan so that all of your paint is collected in the pan. Next, you will suction out a small amount of water in your pipette or turkey baster. You'll squeeze the paint solution toward the top of your paper allowing the paint to drip all the way down. Repeat the step with your additional colors. Your different colors will run and drip and mix together, creating a beautiful waterfall on your paper. Once you're happy with your waterfall, let it dry. And after it's dry, you can embellish your painting with trees or grass or animals, whatever you want in your landscape. I can't wait to see your paintings. Thank you so much for being here with me today at Learn and Play. I can't wait to see you next time. Bye.